Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you to yet another concept classes for sociology optional by Sunni IS. And friends, today we're going to talk about a very, very important concept and that is constant sum concept of power as well as variable sum concept of power. And these concepts are very important because a direct question has come from this particular topic in the UPSC mains examination in sociology optional. So that's why this topic becomes very important and this topic is basically a part of paper 1 unit 7. The unit name is politics and society and there we have one subunit that is sociological theory of power and under sociological theory of power basically we talk about constant sum concept of power and variable sum concept of power. So today in this session, I'll be talking about these two concepts in a very simple yet comprehensive manner, right? So now let's start with the session. So the first thing is that what is power? Okay, before I talk about and go into detail with respect to constant some concept of power, I just want to tell you in a very simple lemma language what exactly power means. So if I have to define power, I'll tell that power is the ability to or you know ability to control or influence the behavior of others and thus imposing your will on others against their own wishes so it is the ability to control or influence the behavior of others thus imposing your will over others against their wishes right now here the person who is imposing the will the person who is imposing the will is at the dominating position is at the dominating position just like in the corporates your boss is at the dominating position and you're simply an employee so you'll be following whatever the boss will be telling to you okay and upon whom okay the will is being imposed against their wishes they are at the subordinate position so in a nutshell the powerful people are able to fulfill their desires against the wishes of other people right so this is a very simple definition that i'm you know giving you now here you can take an example just like suppose there is a family now here we have parents and we have children now how the power dynamic works you can see through this example now suppose a children their children or you know uh, any single child who wants to go out and you know play in the field and the parents are insisting in fact giving an order that that child should not go out in fact that child should devote all the time for the future examination or for the studies right so here the parents are at the powerful position right and children are at the subordinating position here the parents are able to impose their will upon the children and thus children are you know behaving as per the order of given by their parents so this is how you can talk about within a family right now here this is just a basic thing that i was telling you what exactly power is all about to add more into with respect to the basics of power here max weber 
he says a very renowned sociologist who gave this concept of constant some concept of power he said that this power is present in all walks of life present in all walks of life right it is not that the power is only present in you know political uh, you know era or you know political arena it is present in economic field it is present in uh, you know corporates it pre it is present in other social sphere so it is not only present in political sphere but it is also present in other social or economic sphere right so there is a kind of power differential there is a kind of a power differential i'll tell you what is power differential in the you know uh, upcoming slide only so here in social sphere or the economic sphere you can take an example just like in social sphere i give an example of family only like in family if you talk about the patriarchal society in patriarchal society it is basically the senior most male you know adult member who is most powerful within the family while if you talk about in the matriarchal society it is the senior most basically female member matriarchal society just like if you talk about you know economic sphere suppose there is a factory setup so the boss is at the you know uh, dominating position while the workers are at the subordinating position so boss is at the powerful position and whatever the directions are given by the boss they are being executed or obeyed by the people who are working under him or her okay so this is how you can talk about that you know what max weber meant when he said that power is present in all walks of life here you can also give one more example a very beautiful example suppose uh, you know every in our everyday life if we we give you know certain alms when we say alms it means you know food or you can say money so anything so when we give alms to beggar so what does it signify it signifies what it signifies basically that in a subtle manner you are showing your economic power yeah this is true i think you all will agree with this that when you give certain you give uh, anything to a poor person in terms of you know you are donating so it means that in a subtle way you are showing your economic power now here there is a difference okay sometimes we you know student use the word power and they use power and authority synonymously but this is not correct when we use i talked about in detail what is power now what is authority authority basically means it is a legitimate power legitimate power okay which means it has the sanctity of law it is as per the rules and regulations of the state and when we talk about the coercive power it means it is not as per the rules and regulations it doesn't mean that it has any kind of acceptance by the members of the society it is not legitimate okay so authority is basically a legitimate power now when we talk about authority we say that you know master has the right to give command and master also expect at the same time that whatever command the master has given the subordinates or the servant must follow those commands you know with utmost sincerity so this is all about the power and authority in a very nutshell okay in a very simple and nutshell way now let's talk about the constant some concept of power now this concept was given by none other than max weber as i mentioned earlier it is also written up you know here also max weber constant some concept of power 
now i'll tell you what is constant sum concept of power it's very very easy thing now suppose you have 100 rupees okay you have 100 rupees and somebody came and snatched you know 60 rupees from you the person came and snatched 60 rupees from you so you are left with what only 40 rupees right so just you know drawing the same analogy i am telling that in society power is constant or fixed just like suppose in society there is only 100 rupees so if you have 40 rupees other person has 60 per rupees so it is total is 100 only right so power in society is constant or fixed though power cannot be quantified it's a very very qualitative terminology just like you cannot measure that how much a mother loves her or you know child so similarly uh, you know power can also cannot also be you know quantified but i'm just telling you so that you know you can understand things so power is constant or fixed in the society so if somebody holds the power that person is holding the power at the expense of other okay see if suppose if i am powerful so i am powerful why because the other person is not powerful so person is powerful at the expense of other the same analogy you can draw here that suppose if i say in society this 100 units of power this is just to understand though you cannot quantify that's what i said earlier also so suppose this 100 units of power so if one person has 50 units so maybe other if suppose one person has 40 units so other person is having 60 units so the person who is having 60 units is basically powerful compared to the person who is having 40 units right Forty units and sixty units. So this is what power constant sum concept of power is all about. Okay. So if someone holds the power, the other won't be holding the power. And here, that's why the power differential exists. Okay. Because not everybody is on the same pedestal. Okay. If I have to say, not everybody is standing on the same pedestal. If somebody is standing here. the other person standing here right it is not on the same pedestal so this person basically person 1 is more powerful than person 2 okay so this is what you can talk about the constant sum concept of power and these power holders because there is a power differential one person is more powerful so the person who is more powerful these people powerful people actually work for to perpetuate their own interest okay so the powerful people they work to perpetuate perpetuate their their own interests so the power differential is overall overall is not beneficial for society it is not beneficial for society okay so the power differential is not beneficial for the society and since there is a power differential what happen it leads to a kind of an inevitable conflict in the society remember that thing the power differential it leads to what it leads to inevitable conflict in the society you can give lots and lots of example suppose there is one mnc okay 
that mnc has lots and lots of economic power because they are controlling all the forces of production okay all the means of production they also have a proper say in the administration of the country okay because they are financing the elections so if their uh, political parties actually you know comes to power so they'll have a proper say in the overall administration of the country also so these mncs will be very powerful right just like you know they will try to have their way they will try to perpetuate their interest you know in every manner possible just like you can take an example also like niyamgiri hill protest right where vedan vedanta as an mnc started you know mining for the bauxite uh, mineral in the niyamgiri hill uh, of odisha though later it was you know scrapped by the you know supreme court and uh, you know the tribals one but i'm just telling that how the you know mncs who are very much powerful in terms of economic and political sphere and they have their way so this is how you can talk about their you know the significance also okay the significance of the constant some concept of power various concepts that we use in sociology right so this is about the max weber concept of power remember when we say constant it means that it is fixed it cannot be changed if it is 100 unit it will remain 100 unit only right now next is the talcott parson variable sum of concept variable sum concept of power now this variable sum concept of power this concept was given by talcott parson okay who was a functionalist remember this thing talcott parson gave the concept of uh, variable sum concept of power now earlier i talked about that max weber says the constant sum concept of power where the power is fixed or constant in a society if somebody is powerful so the other is not powerful now here when i talk about the variable sum concept of power it is simply in a opposite of what max weber said so in a variable sum concept of power what happened power in society is not fixed or constant in society right power can increase or decrease in society remember this thing so as per talcott parson power is not fixed or constant in society rather power can increase or decrease in society okay just like earlier when i talked about the last slide here when i say it is 100 units here it could be 100 it could increase to 160 to 200 it could even decrease to 80 50 okay so something of that sort right so now let's talk about what he's meant by variable sum concept of power i'll just try to you know elaborate it more so here first thing first is that he says that power is owned by the community as a whole remember that thing just like earlier in constant sum concept of power some group of people or the individual was having you know more power compared to the other people so the power was not dispersed throughout the society in the constant sum concept of power but here as per talcott parson he says that power is dispersed throughout the society power is dispersed throughout the society in fact power is what power is not owned by single person it is owned by all the members of the community okay it is not held by single person so this is what you know talcott parson basically meant now here you can also talk about the fact that he talked about value consensus value consensus this is very important because when i talk about the fact that talcott parson is a functionalist
functionally basically you know i'll be talking in lot of detail in our sociological foundation course in a nutshell i can tell you that functionally basically sees everything that you know whatever exists in the society is functional for the society it helps in overall maintenance and sustenance of the social system or the society so telcot person was also uh, you know seeing that the concept of power is overall beneficial for society beneficial for society so when it is beneficial so he was only looking at the functional aspect of society he was not looking into the conflict aspect you know aspect of the uh, power so i'll come to this thing that how it is beneficial for the society okay so this thing i have explained that power is not uh, you know owned by single person but it is dispersed throughout the uh, you know society it is enjoyed by all the members of the society next is value consensus when i talk about the value consensus it means that it there is a kind of a overall broad agreement over the you can say beliefs practices or the goals of society and there is a broad agreement among whom the broad agreement is among all the members of the society okay broad agreement is among all the members of the society so when we talk about that is a broad agreement with respect to the goals of the society so this goal becomes what this goal becomes a collective goal of whole society collective goal of whole society why because everybody agrees to the fact that this should be the goal of the society just like in western society the overall collective goal is what materialism to have a very good mansion to have lot of money to have you know uh, you know big fancy car okay live a lavish life materialism right even in modern industrial society even in you know modern indian society materialism is basically the collective goal of the society so when we have a collective goal okay so the power is basically used to achieve the collective goal of the society okay power is actually used to achieve the overall collective goal of the society so now when you know certain person are made more powerful okay certain persons are made more powerful so when i said earlier in the zero uh, you know constant some concept of power zero sum uh, concept of power that power differential leads to you know conflict but here when some people are given more pow power so here the power differential is not leading to conflict it is not leading to conflict because telcor person was seeing only the beneficial or the benefits okay he was because he was functionalist so his whole perspective of looking at the power differential was completely different so he was looking the power differential concept from a different perspective different angle so he is seeing this power differential is very much helpful why because it is not leading to conflict rather it helps in achieving the collective goal of the society okay when certain people become more powerful it they help in uh, you know they work in overall good faith to achieve the collective goal of the society and when that collective goal is achieved the power of the society increases suppose some people suppose uh, you know there's a politician we elect a politician and overall we elect any single party single party and overall overall the you know the basic aim basic aim or collective goal of the society is to reduce poverty right to increase standard of living right to provide job to everyone so what person says that when we elect any single party those party members are basically exercising more power 
right so these people will work for overall benefit of the society why because there is a value consensus value consensus consensus as i mentioned earlier that everybody actually agrees that this should be the goal of the society and everybody is working you know from the bottom of their heart to achieve that goal so if we are able to reduce the poverty if we are able to provide job to everyone if you are able to increase the standard of living so what happen the power will increase power of society will increase but if at the same time we not able to reduce the poverty poverty has rather increased okay the standard of living has you know decreased and their you know mass unemployment so the power will decrease power of society will decrease so that's why the power is not a constant sum concept of power which is also known as zero sum concept of power rather power is a variable sum concept of power okay so this differential okay here when we say power differential so both the sides both the sides means like common people who are giving power okay by electing the people by granting them power so both the sides the common people and the powerful people who are working together to achieve the collective goal both the sides when they achieve the collective goal it will kind of become a win win situation for everyone right and thus it forms a basis for what it forms a basis for cooperation coordination and reciprocity in the society and when it forms a basis there is a kind of cooperation and coordination in the society it leads to what it leads to overall maintenance and sustenance of the whole system maintenance and sustenance of whole system okay so power differential is beneficial for the society i'll add certain more points here that suppose when i said earlier that power differential earlier in weber concept led to you know conflict which is inevitable here the power differential is beneficial for the society now suppose if you want to achieve the collective goal so every member of the society who share the same goal they have to come together they have to you know pull in their resources and efforts then only they'll be able to achieve the collective goal right if every member you know is in working individually to achieve the societal goal it will become very difficult so when everyone is sharing the same collective goal and pulling their efforts along with the you know powerful people they'll be able to achieve the collective goal more easily right so to achieve the collective goal what happen there is a need of you know cooperation overall organization on the large scale so some people are given more power compared to others so that they can organize everything they can manage everything okay so that's why when some people are given more powerful what happen these people are made to sit at the position of command right they are made to sit at the position of command they are given more authority so that's how you can say that one person who is given more authority will help in achieving the collective goal so that's how the power differential is actually beneficial for the society okay and remember the power is not constant power keeps on changing you can also take an example of that suppose when india got independence in 1947 okay it was quite weak we were politically weak we were economically very much weak there was mass unemployment there was literacy rate was very low but you know in today in today's time the power of india has increased considerably has increased considerably why because the poverty has decreased we have become self reliant with respect to the production of the food okay apart from that thing you can also talk about that we have become nuclear power literacy rate has increased now people are no uh, gainfully employed in various sectors of the economy there is you know uh, uh, india has carried out various kind of space missions so the power of the india has increased it has not no earlier if the power was just to give an example okay just help you understand suppose the power was 100 not has become you know maybe 1 lakh 
this is just to help you understand okay so just want to tell you that the power cannot remain the same as per the telcot parsons variable sum concept of power okay so this was all about the variable sum concept of power remember he always said that power is owned by the community as a whole plus there is a value consensus unless until you don't have a value consensus okay you cannot have a collective goal and when you have a collective goal then only everybody will strive forward put their resources efforts everybody okay they will put their resources and efforts to achieve that collective goal and that collective goal could be anything right and when that collective goal will is achieved the power of the overall society increases right and if that collective goal is not achieved the power of the society decreases okay so this was about the telcot parson variable sum concept of power and you can give mo many more example to enrich your content right so this was about the concept now this marks the end of the session and you know in sociological theory of power there is various other theories as well just like i talk about today uh, weber zero sum concept of power which is also known as constant sum concept of power again i'll repeat that <coughs> constant sum constant sum of power or variable sum concept of power here constant sum concept of power is also known as zero sum concept of power okay this is also known as zero sum concept of power right so there are other uh, you know theories as well uh, just like you can talk about elite theories marxist theories neo marxist theories then there are state centered theories where we will be talking about theodas kokpol then there are post modernist theory where we talk about you know uh, letard baudrillard then michel foucault theories then there are other theories just like now the theory of very important theory that is you know michel mann theory so all these theories will be very very thoroughly covered in our sociology foundation course by sonia is and you can join that course because i'll be telling you each and everything with respect to their you know significance positives negatives of each and every theory in detail right and we are offering this course in a very very reasonable price okay and all the details are you know will be uh, present in the description box you know given below now this marks the end of the session and before i end the session i just want to tell one thing that you know generally students are very much stressed they are very much anxious that what will be the result you know uh, with respect to their preparation and they keep on pondering over that you know they are keep uh, though they are working hard but they keep on thinking about the future i request all of you to you know focus upon present day be happy right be happy focus upon you upon the present day break all the complex tasks in the small small tasks accordingly you will gain the confidence right and when you will be happy your efficiency will automatically increase and remember very beautiful lines okay that i'm going to say that you know yesterday is a you know yesterday is a history tomorrow is a mystery but today is a gift and that is why it is called present okay so study hard uh be happy and all the best and thank you